Dr. Dele Ashuru here with us, who is of the Political Science Department, University of Lagos. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for inviting me. Well, today will be the day where they inaugurate another committee, but this one, we understand it will be headed by Senator Ken Namani. Uh, it's another electoral reform committee, and uh, they're going to give them that terms of reference. But, you know, we have several. But we're going to have this other one, they say, is to address perceived areas where they think all oh, is not going right. How do you see this playing out? What area do you see, do you think that they will focus on that perhaps will be new to us? Well, thank you very much. I think the way to start is to ask a rhetorical question. To what extent has the recommendations of electoral panels instituted in this country before now to what extent has they have they been implemented and i talk specifically in reference uh, in reference to the justice mohammed always panel this is a panel instituted by government to look at you know gray areas within the electoral process and i dare say that uh, that panel had done a commendable job at least by all those who have assessed the 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 report of the wise panel so one is surprised that another panel is being instituted when critical recommendations of the waste panel are yet to be implemented i mean for example why institute a panel and to make it even more laughable this panel is headed by a known partisan politician, a card-carrying member of a political party. So what manner of reform do you expect from a panel composed of purely politicians? I, I, I also read the composition and I found even people who are executive members of ex while executive members of known political parties in a reform committee that is supposed to look at you know an electoral umpire so that, that that for me leaves more to be desired but that doesn't mean that whatever recommendation they come up with because remember people are expected to submit memoranda to them it's not going to be their own decision that they will take does that change does that matter well i i, I don't think it does because thus far i am wondering what aspect of nigeria's electoral reform is yet to be covered by the justice mohammed Uwais panel report and specifically because majority of the recommendations of that report are yet to be implemented let's take for example the credibility and the integrity of those who man electoral offices in nigeria as bad as we may say you know s y governments have been let us take the jonathan administration for example he took the bold step in appointing Jega to head INEC. And up till today, no single individual has been able to fault the appointment of a Jega as INEC chairman. Today, the same cannot be said of all the appointments that have been made in INEC thus far. That's one. Number two, as I speak with you, the board of INEC is still yet to be properly constituted. The board, it took, you know, agitation from civil society groups, several editorials by newspapers, columnists, etc., to get this government to send names of members of INEC board, you know, to the Senate. The point I'm trying to make is, are we saying that we need an electoral reform to keep faith with provisions of the Constitution? as enshrined in paragraph 14.3 of the third schedule of the constitution, which, which mandated government to fully constitute the board of INEC. Also bear in mind that the issue of INEC's board is still before competent course of jurisdiction in Nigeria. Senator Mowarari, for example, took INEC to court on the basis of its inability to take critical decisions as it has to do with election because the board is yet to be properly constituted. All of these issues are left unattended to. And the only thing government can do now 
is to institute another panel to waste money in you know days of recession because this panel is certainly going to spend money take memoranda from people sit and get allowances and all that so and we're saying that there is a committee report that is yet to be fully implemented you know in all of this it reminding us of what we've seen in times past uh, would mean as if we've seen this before uh, almost a perennial issue with every government when they come in they set up one Talking about the Justice of Waste report, which so many people, politicians and even rights groups, have called the government at that time to look into. Uh, you saying that that's what uh, this present government should well, also look into. Also, that we're in a recession and stop spending. Certainly, certainly, I say this because one, if you study the Waste Panel report, to my mind, I believe that that report touched on critical aspects of the problems of election in Nigeria. Take, for example, the report sought to, you know, uh, exonerate, so to speak, INEC from the busy schedules of, you know, monitoring political parties, their finances, their organizations, etc. That, to my mind, up to today, is a problem in Nigeria. Nobody is talking about that. That report also recommended that an election offenses uh, tribunal be set up. Up to today, people commit all kinds of electoral arrests, all kinds of electoral malfeasance, and they go unscratched. What this government should be doing, which I think should represent the change upon which they campaigned, is to take this bold step in implementing these recommendations to my mind this unamani panel is only diversionary is is unnecessary is is going to is going to you know uh, increase the burden financial burden well, on well, government. Well, why do you think we're still going in circles we're still doing it the old well, way in, uh, hold on a minute oh, uh, sorry to cut you there why do you think we're still doing it the old way even though uh, we've always uh, been told that there is a change in all of this action. Is it because of the composition of those within the leadership cycle or no one seemed to be listening? Well, you see, some of us have refrained from, I mean, discussing the so-called change. If we look at our polity today, all aspects of our polity, what has changed? Absolutely nothing. You haven't seen any change? And this is also symptomatic of that malady of moving in one circus of all the myriads of problems afflicting Nigeria today how would a government be talking about constitutional and electoral reform when there are blueprints about the way to go yeah. certainly this is making some of us to begin to think that this may just be the beginning of permutations for the 2019 you know, general election. So is it that you have a, a grouse with uh, the composition of the panel or setting up the panel at all? Not a grouse. I feel that the, com the, the composition, the, you know, the panel, the idea of the panel itself is, is not only misplaced, it is untimely. The composition leaves more to be desired because, I mean, a can in the money to head electoral reform. I mean, the answers are clear. The kinds of reform you will expect are almost predictable. Are you judging the book by its cover? Because he's not going to take the decisions all by himself. No, no, no. You see, the point we ought to note is that INEC as an institution ought to be an umpire, insulated from governance. And that's why. But is he a member of a political party now? I thought he said he's, uh, he pulled out from the party <laughs> he belonged to initially. And uh, have not been with APC. Well, I'm not here to discuss in the money. What I'm here to do is to say categorically that this idea of forming a committee on electoral reform is, is, is misplaced. Even if they are going to combine the reports, including the Justice Ways report, take a look at it, so, in addition to the memoranda, and come up with another one, you still won't buy it. I still won't buy it because I feel that. Like I said earlier, first, 
waste panels report is yet to be fully implemented and INEC needs some relative autonomy that's the meaning of the independence in INEC up till now the waste report that INEC's funding should be on the first line charge is yet to be implemented the insulation of the personnel, the top echelon of INEC, from partisan politics, appointment by president, is yet to be implemented. As I speak with you, the board of INEC is still yet to be properly constituted, which is a subject of litigation. And the constitution provides that unless that board is properly constituted, INEC could not take, you know, legal and binding decisions on election which they have been doing so i am saying that we don't need an another electoral reform we don't need another merry-go-round shouldn't the national assembly be helping us with a re such a reform and i'm beginning to even i'm getting more worried by the complicit silence of the national assembly on its oversight function on INEC. as we speak with all the barrage of uh, of, of of problems inundating INEC, right. the National Assembly, who ought to provide that oversight function, is today absolutely okay. quiet. We'll take a look at and what... I think that portends danger.